I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 with my father and brother and I. We're at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Okay, tonight, conservation meeting is uh, January 8th, it's open. Time is 7.05. Staff members available? Paul Clark? Artie Hinton? Mark Sotir. Sandra Simon. Rachel Keller. And Scott Clawson. Forgive me, this is my first one doing this. Um, is the hearing being recorded on? Yes, we're being recorded. Cable? Okay. Uh, hearing is being recorded by cable broadcast. The following must be oh, read this out of you. Please note that the meeting is being made available to the public through video and audio broadcast on PAC TV, Government Access Channel for broadcast on future dates. Comments made in open session will be recorded. Let's see. Okay, first hearing is 710. Oh, certainly on 7 o'clock. Oh, uh, minutes, anyone read the Did anyone have a chance to do the minutes? Read the minutes, yeah. Any, minutes. Questions? Any questions on the minutes? Will we accept the minutes? I second it. Everybody approved? Yes. Aye. Good to go. Minutes approved, November 27. Uh, we will issue a certificate of compliance, but 300 Center Street for repairs that were done back in the dark ages. Second. Okay. Because that's what, what were those repairs? They were repairs done when it was a Chinese restaurant. Oh. It's just because oh, of the bank doing some work, they find that the title had, had something still against it but way back then. So it's like. Scotty was a waiter there for crying out loud. This one. <laughs> Motion's been made and seconded. Everybody approved? No. Uh, Morrison Way has been started, or actually, it was started right after our last meeting almost a month ago. <coughs> and it's going on. We I have allowed them to use the metal sign posts for the conservation tags with the stipulation that when the lots are done that we can ask or make them change them bit to the wooden ones that we normally use. But this time of year putting four by four wooden posts into the ground and all that and a lot of those posts are out of no man's land anyway down there so they're, they're on steel posts right now so they are in and we can change it over as the lots come in independent. Perfect. We got three minutes before. Yeah. Well, we can't go in. No. Is there anything else? Oh, man. Is, is that clearing uh, complete now on person twice away? They're working on this still clearing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I haven't been there. I, the I, I haven't been there this last week. It was yeah, not that I, I wanted been, to go walk in any of those days this last week. Well, but they, yeah, they've been working and we're clearing. Yeah, they uh, took quite a bit of it. Yeah, yeah sealant is doing the work. So. Okay. Keeping a pretty good eye on it. They're going to open up the path to the old section right at the beginning. It may be open by now. But that was one of their first priorities is opening the walking path area to the section that's already done. Okay. So they, they can park there and walk through it somebody wants. Okay. Sorry. Over here, Rachel, did have we respond to this letter that came from the North River Commission? Oh, okay. Did we respond to the letter that came in from the North River Commission? Yeah. 
Is that one in the mail? It's actually being handled uh, by the town administrator. And I don't know, have you talked to him about it recently? I just talked to him a little bit tonight, and he was on his way to a meeting, so he didn't ever really want to get involved in what he did. Oh. <laughs> Well, we have another minute now, Rachel. Did the, uh, so that letter that was written to Brockton, did that finally get sent off? Yes. And was that contained within a packet from other boards as well, or did it go independently? We sent it independently with okay. the attachments to everyone that you had listed um, on your right on. Okay. Okay. Any response? Nope. <laughs> so, just curious, so it got changed, obviously, was that from the selectman's office that it got changed? No, it was from our office. Who, so, who was in our office? We, Bob and I discussed it, um, and I think it was kind of a decision that we made because the developments with Brockton paying for, I forget what Bill had told us, what and started to, to try to remedy the situation. We also looked at the letter from um, Kingston. They took a little softer approach as well. I think we, we didn't want it to come across as, for lack of a better word, a spending. It was more the, of like... It's not, my thought is it's nice to have somebody in there that they think they can talk to. Otherwise, we sometimes, we yeah, you know, sometimes they, if there's someone that they think they, they are, uh, pick the right word, but in other words, if we all take a, a big stand, solid hard against mm -hmm. it, then there's no one to talk to. If you, if you, someone's going through and say, well, maybe these are the people that get, we can talk to to get our foot in the door to get something yeah. going. I certainly see. That. I don't think it's going to do any good one way or the other. Yeah, I certainly see the rationale of that. I think I, that that all that language came from my historical view of no. they never listened anyway. Right. No. No. So True. so start strong and True. go from there. But yeah. we'll see what happens. I feel a two pronged approach is like anything diplomatically. You have to have a very strong front, I think, and then you have your diplomacy. I think one without the other is going to be another 138 years of free water and nothing fixed. Yeah, that's right. I want to keep just a little door opening it. They can, they can slide something in, perhaps. I think they're the ones been sliding something in for a long time. Yeah, they have. For they, have they also have the political pull. They have the right to do that. Exactly. And that's what the problem is. Uh, there are some other things that are happening. I think we are still on already. Okay. Yeah, Everybody good? Not tonight's agenda. Yeah, you go. Everybody good? We yeah. open that. Mm -hmm. Okay, at seven. Thank you. A little later than seven ten, seven twelve. Notice of intent for two seventeen Loftec Street, map B eight, lot sixty four, three ten, three eleven, McGarrel, D E P file S E fifty six one oh zero seven. Anybody here to speak yeah. on it? Or? But we're waiting for Grace. Grace in one of the engineer. other yeah. meetings right now. Mm -hmm. He's either in planning or board of health. He, he was, was running. He was standing, standing at the bottom of the stairs when I came up. Yeah, he's running yeah. between meetings. Oh, he's between meetings? Okay. John McGarrel is not here, but I'm here. Okay. Well, what? So we can want to wait until mm -hmm. the table out. Well, we can't go to 720 anyway. Yeah. We can look at what it, the plans. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what was your name now? We are 12. And you are representing them uh, from what? Just a realtor. Your he realtor. asked me to okay. live far away. Yeah. So he asked that I come. Okay. We can read through a little on this is a lot on Wampatuck Street. Uh, as I told you, it's what, what I call the old theater lot. It used to be a movie theater on the lot back in the 40s. Oh, okay. Uh, it came before us a number of years ago, four or five, six years ago, and was approved for a house and all at that time. The house was not built, time was gone on the lot, so it's being resubmitted again. 
very small. You want to put a movie theater in there? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. So this this space is the like the book yeah. Put the Matakesis. That's Matakesis right there. This one right here. Yeah. So Walter's the one. Yeah. Right yeah. So right 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 there, right there, Walter. Yep. Right behind you. Yes. Yeah. As you come up onto Wampadoc Street, the corner house, the big corner house, the Brown Betty, yeah. and after that there's the driveway. The driveway. This is the lot just beyond the driveway before you get to the next house. Okay, I can picture it. It looks like it's the ad for the next house, but it's a, there was a lot there. So the structure was demoed in the past? Oh, this, the movie theater hasn't been there since okay. 50s, the early 50s at that time. So what, it's run out, the permit, and the plans, or just the permit? Well, the plans well, that they submitted four years ago, it's, their time months have gone on. Right. Okay. On the whole, other, so it's a scratch from right. scratch. From scratch, it's yeah. It's been re, uh, the wetlands have been re-flagged, uh, re-recorded. They don't necessarily agree exactly with what they were five or six years ago, one of the big things, and I'm kind of speak because I talked to Mr. Brady about it. On the new plans, you'll see they saw area in the middle of, like a little pond in area. Mm -hmm. That doesn't show on the original set of plans. Uh, and I don't know what, I should <coughs> you can probably speak from, but I, I would think that you want to try to classify that piece as isolated area, not subject to flooding, and then means it's not under our jurisdiction for that little puddle, which means they can fill it and use it as a yacht. Actually, it does flood in the winter time. It's just a little sandbar that got filled in from, uh, like, the landing sand coming down. I'm speaking for you, so I appreciate that. Thank you. My, <laughs> oh my tail now. Is this a, a house or an outbuilding? This, this uh, structure right here? It's 211. It's a neighbor's house. Well, that is yeah. right. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, this was a project that was actually approved back in 2003 to rebuild the new house on here, septic system. Um, I think he hit the 06, 07 time frame and let everything sit. Unfortunately, everything expired. Um, so with that, the weapon from delineation expired. <coughs> Floodplain maps have changed. Um, some of the rules and regulations on the septic system have changed. So he was hoping to take that previous 2003 plan and reapply with that plan for updated permits, but okay. it wasn't quite that easy. So we redid the wetland delineation. We uh, updated the survey, connected it to a NAVD 1988 datum so that we're on the same elevation basis as the newer floodplain maps. Uh, we also went through the uh, Title V requirements for innovative alternative systems. This had been designed as a jet system and in 2003 it was required to be pressure dosed. So it involved not only the jet tank but also a pump chamber and a pressure dose leaching field. Under today's requirements we no longer have to pressure dose that field so we're able to go to the jet tank for treatment still uh, and then rather than going to a pump chamber we're able to go by gravity to the distribution box and then to the same size leaching field that was previously approved. Um, as I think I heard Bob mentioning, we actually found that today our wetland uh, scientist, John Zimmer, pulled that wetland line up quite a bit further than they had shown on the 2003 plan. Basically, they were going with the edge of the pond in 2003. We did revise the house location to pull it up as close as we could to Wampatuck Street. Uh, previously, it was kind of rotated about 30 degrees and it was back about another 30 feet. The floodplain lines fairly close to us. It's at this um, elevation 59 contour here in the back. Um, so that we're not reducing flood storage capacity, we wanted to pull everything uphill of that flood zone line. Uh, so no fill is proposed within flood zone. 
We're doing a rear walkout basement to minimize the grading to the back of the house. Uh, we did propose erosion control, uh, as we typically expect here. Uh, we also shortened up the driveway. Uh, the driveway was quite a bit longer. We do want to maintain a fairly level driveway. We're sloping down from elevation 62 and a half to 59 where the flood zone is. Um, so we shortened up that driveway to make sure we can make that slope without actually putting any fill into the uh, land subject to flood. Uh, we did also reapply the Board of Health for the septic system. Uh, they did continue that hearing. I've got a couple of numerical errors in our distances that we're stating in our variance request. I need to clean up for them and get back to them before they'll be able to issue an approval on it. Uh, aside from that, it's got a lot of similarities to that 2003 approval, just updated for 2017. Do you, do you know what lives in the water hole line tips? I do not. Um, we do have a wetland summary form that our wetland scientist did. Shown us. Are you wondering if it may be a vernal pool or? Yeah, will do the first portion. Yeah. yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Um, however, I, I don't know, but we are not doing any work in that area, and we are keeping all of the proposed work as far as practical from that low area. Does the regulation say how far you have to be away from a vernal pool, if it, just in case it is? The it's not a certified vernal pool. Um, and so we would be straight wetlands protection act, um, no bylaw. Uh, so basically, no, we're not allowed to alter it. Um, it is subject to jurisdiction because it is within the wetland resource area. Um, but there's no specific setback. To it. I don't think it's even shown as a potential vernal pool uh, by natural heritage. There's a lot of more registered. Uh, I think we should look into what, what that water is. It seems to have changed a couple of times, so to find out more different than it is. Go down the house there. Well, we were shown in its contours in 2003 under the previous approval as a depression. Um, don't know that there was even any standing water in it. Well, it says water hole. So, I mean, that pretty much says it's a water hole, it's not a depression. I mean, it says it right here, water hole. No, so but this is a comment that he's talking about the old plan. Okay. Um, so, it's not considered a water hole on the old plan? No, the old plan, the wetland resource area was actually roughly where the pond is located. They weren't showing that as being a wetland area at all. Um, mm -hmm. So, okay. But what we see is where it's just going to be in the wetlands. The wetlands where the where the hole that we're discussing is going to be um, disturbed. Right. It's not going to be touched. So, so it's a new point. It's right. I don't know if they heard me say that, but here's where it's going to be. So, like, how far would you have to be away from a water hole? No, the water hole is not. It's either a vernal pool or it's not. Uh, these guys fishing or crossing or guys. Who's fish over here? We're saying that it's actually the pond. Well, it's the pond it has fish in it, and it's not a walk. It's a water hole, but with fish in it. It's a pond. And you have to figure out what it is. Well, the regulations say that until it's certified, it's nothing. Right. right. Furthermore, it's so. not going to be disturbed for this project. But I thought I guess you said that you were going to fill it in. No, oh, I just it's, it's, oh. it's, it's just that that was the alternative. Okay. So it has more to do with the, in my opinion, the floodplain regulations that we wouldn't be able to fill it in with providing condenser and temporary storage. So um, I think that would be the only holdup to that. We're, we're not proposing to touch it. Um, wetland line is quite a bit uphill from what was approved previously. We're not going to affect the flood storage capacity. Uh, if indeed it is serving any function as a vernal pool, it's not certified today. It's not shown as a potential vernal pool. And on top of that, we're not touching it. And just uh, we cannot require them to certify it. Right. We could ask to take respect to it, though. You just 
We could ask for information um, concerning um, the future uses of that area, like an OCC or what, you know, don't fill it in. I just don't think filling in a water hole is as is they are, they are proposing to, right, yeah. that's the same. So maybe yeah. the, we can I do spoke out of the chair and I just yeah. I was presenting to you people other options to be thinking about before Mr. Grady got there. Yeah. We have a clearly labeled limit of work that is uphill of not only the, the water hole but uphill of the flag wetland as well. Um, so that limit of work is very clearly depicted on the plan and no work is proposed in the area of the water hole. Perhaps you're proven to just make it a condition that the water hole, as it's stated, is not disturbed in any way going forward. Right. Is that fair? I would think, at least till we know what it is or isn't, we should protect it just on the grounds that it may be. And if that works for everybody, then we don't do anything in there and it's still a brown pool. If it is, if it's not, it's not a big deal. And it still gets protection. I, I, I agree. I think we're all saying the same thing. You know? Yeah. I'm just important right now. Um, you know, it says water hole, that's just kind of, you know, ouch. Anybody else got that? Yes. Oh. Ask me other people. Any other buddies from the school? Everybody. Do any of the buddies have anything to say? Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. That sounds kind of awkward, but, you know, the general is focusing with this project. Uh, we've been here for many years, and uh, that was back many, many years ago before the sandbar, the tiny sandbar that uh, washed up more. Uh, the pond came in and out of there. So um, I think what he's proposing is an excellent compromise not to disturb it. And it is a source of great uh, area for wildlife. Population uses it as a green brand. So I'll explain after her how the sand got there. Can you, I'm sorry, ma'am. Was your name and address, please? Carol Tamarosio, 223. 223, okay. You have, a, you have a house right behind so the you're, greenhouse, right? Yes. No. No. Our the long driveway? The pork chop, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're looking down on that water hole, yes, basically? Yes, we are. Yeah, okay. Have you got anything, anything else you'd like to add? No. Mr. Ford. The sand got there because of the Longos to putting all that sand in and doing the, the water. The sand walks. And all that sand he put in there kept walking over because, you know, I got my house right there with yep. the patio in it. All that sand walked over. But that's an inlet that's there. I don't know if you can fill it in or not, but that's how the sand got there. It didn't wash this way, hmm. it washed from over where the Luongos live. And that's, right. that's how it got over there. The I so, used to move it, and then one year, every year I used to move it, so I could keep that open. But they tell me, a bunch of sand that came down to me. So I was moving it, then one year I got a sciatic, I was on my back for nine months. And I just, you know, when I got done, I said, ah, I don't know what it is. Okay. And the sandbox has been building and building. And you're also a 223, sir? Huh? You're a 223 also? Yes, sir. And what was your address, sir? 211. 211, okay. So you're the house right in the line. So what, what you're saying is that that was actually part of the pond at one point? Probably got sufficient. It had sufficient. Yeah, the plan Is that seasonal water that's in there, or is it in water all the time? Because basically water all the time is there's springs right in that area. What's that? You know, it does get a little dry in August, <coughs> okay. but if there's a nice spring, because the whole pond is all spring fed. A little bit of the same as the pond. It's all sandy soils. So. Yeah. yeah, it's the same book. Is there any other mother that would like to say anything? And it sounds like there's no proposal for any work to go on around this or filling in or anything. So, anybody else? Any second, please.
Everybody good with closing? Again, I'm making this as official as I can, but it's, this is new to me, so. Um, You're doing good. It's a, it's a learning game. Um, as long as everybody's happy, we're close. In accordance to plan, we were following that the area of the, of the so-called waterhole not be disturbed. Any work beyond the behavioral <coughs> uh, line? What, what do you call it? Area uh, of we work? did silt sock and limit of work. Yeah. yeah. Any any work beyond the limit of work would require another filing. And all our usual regulations concerning fertilizers and notifications and all that. Uh, I'll second that. Motion made and seconded. Everybody agree? Thank you. Yep, yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to go. All right, yeah, I got it. Okay, good. Oh, okay. We have a saying is coming here. What's the old free? Same said there wasn't even a real water hole there. I mean, so the land was there. It's just maybe built it up. Everything along the pond is 7 30 with 10 minutes late, 7 20 hearing. Going to open the next hearing. Notice of intent. The 346 Washington Street, map E12, lot 12, Smith & Sons, DE Pi, DEP file, SE 061009. Lisa, or should we lay it out on the table again? Your choice. Dan actually knows a little bit more about this plan than I do because my brother Kevin's been working on it and he's downstairs at the Board of Health. But we'll get things started. Um, I assume most of you know Dan Smith and Dan's looking to uh, locate a shop over here on the old chip deck site and he's excited to get in there and clean up the mess that's there today. And, um, he would have liked to have been out there clearing it a month or two <laughs> ago. Um, here's a rendering his wife had done of uh, the shop that they'd like to build at that location. Um, he's got to take everything he liked about his old shop over here on Mattachesa Street and roll it into a new one over here. Um, here's the general layout of the site. Uh, the rendering that we were just looking at is uh, this proposed building at the front here, uh, front of John Washington Street. It's about 165 feet from Washington Street to the front of the building, so it's set back pretty well there. Uh, we do have a bordering vegetated wetland that surrounds the property uh, that we get delineated by John Zimmer, our uh, wetland scientist. Um, and basically the center area here and also the uh, lighter green area here is where he's going to propose to be working for mulch processing and mulch storage. Uh, second uh, building in the back in this area here uh, another shop type building uh, with access to the rear of it there. Uh, also is going to be doing a bio, correct me if I'm wrong, biomass heating system uh, in an exterior shed here. Um, goes along with this recycling operation. Mm -hmm. Which, which, which lot there is the fire station? Fire station is right here. Okay. Uh, it's also a small wetland area to the front of the property here. Um, uh, existing conditions plan here, depicting the wetland resource areas, the bordering vegetated wetland in blue, uh, the 100 foot buffer zones in yellow. Uh, we do have a perennial river on uh, this area here with the 100 foot riverfront setback and the 200 foot riverfront setback in green. So 
So very similar to the previous use on the site. He wants to utilize uh, all of the upland area. No work is proposed uh, within the wetland resource areas. Uh, we've designed a number of drainage basins around the property. Um, small depression near the turnaround island in the frontier. Uh, drainage basin in the buffer zone in the, the front wetland here. Uh, and also some drainage to the rear of the back building in this area here. Um, I'm unfamiliar with the previous use, but what was the previous use? The previous use was chip tech, which with processing. With processing. Yep. Was there a structure on the site, or are they just trailers? Just trailers. Yeah, yeah, mobile homes on it. Okay. But if we go before that, this is <coughs> the old West Box Factory. And there were structures there years yep. ago when they were building, building wood blocks and there was a storage yard for drying and lumber and all that. It's been in the lumber part of work for a Did they have a mill around? An actual mill there, didn't they? Yeah, there was yeah. mill buildings yeah. over there. There's a big picture of it in the historic building, how it was in like the 40s and 50s. Yeah. Right now. Uh, this sheet here gives us a good depiction of what's taking place within which resource areas. Um, Proposing to maintain a 25 foot minimum uh, to the wetlands around the perimeter of the property. Um, I guess I'll start in the front here. Work within the 100 foot buffer zone in the front would involve the drainage detention basin on this area here. Uh, as we continue along, we have some additional drainage swales uh, adjacent to the wetlands in this area here. A small portion of this building here is within the 100 foot buffer zone, uh, approximately 50 feet. From or actually about 40 feet from the wetland itself. Um, back corner of this just touches into the 100 foot buffer zone as well. Um, obviously, the driveway is also within the 100 foot buffer. Portion of the mulch processing here will be within the 100 foot buffer. We do have some redevelopment within the riverfront area here for an underground drainage infiltration system, uh, discharging overflow uh, towards the wetland and the river. Uh, it's proposing some bins for material storage adjacent to that, so that'll be pretty clearly demarcated uh, with those concrete storage bins. Um, and then the rebuilding of the entrance roadway uh, is also going to be in the same location where it is today and it will be within the left. Um, drainage calculations were submitted, being reviewed by the uh, Planning Board's consultant, Peter Palmieri from Merrill Associates. Quite a bit of uh, silt sock erosion control here to be installed for uh, protecting the wetland from sediment during construction. Septic systems will be uh, outside of the 100 foot buffer. We're going to be reaching right up in front of the proposed building in this area here. Uh, connecting to town water, connecting to gas. Um, unless Dan has anything to add, if you have to an answer any questions, you may have. Well, I guess some little notes is that, that this is currently a big mound, and we, we're going to leave that when it's within the buffer zone, so we'll essentially have like a, a, a barrier all the way around where we, you know. Or is that land that was run up, or is it a natural it stumps, isn't it? All pile up? Well, it's like loam. Like, 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 yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's why yeah. pile up. There's a lot of cleanup involved here, but we're yeah. excited about it. And the frontage from the front of the building to the street, is that going to be vegetated, or are you taking um, all that down? Uh, we're hoping that it's going to be all uh, lawn, uh, you know, nice green grass. Uh, however, we're working with the Historic Commission now. They choose to have us leave the barn, obviously we're going to clean it up, but uh, yeah, it looks like they're on that ball to the house. Okay. Hopefully it's all nice green grass, very good, clean to the street. Anybody else got any questions? Just interested in the uh, bio uh, system. Yeah, that, that's, Biomass heat? Yeah, that's yeah we're good, pretty excited about that yeah, too. That's a, that's a good move. Yeah, yeah. It really is. It's, it's not that's amazing, isn't it? Uh, well, Diesman uses it and makes them in Germany, oh. and that's the unit we're hoping to use. And it's, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, that guy, it's up there too. Yeah, yeah. Canada. Yeah. So, you guys, any more questions for Mr. Gary or Dan? It's a good use of the property in your, your whole series. Okay. <laughs>
Right. Well, I think one of the first things I need to take care of is that what the wine has not been uh, certified with us. We had, we went through a RDA, but it was only for the middle piece that we worked on. So we are going to need to bring one of our experts in to work with your expert to make sure the line is where it is at your expense. Thanks. <laughs> this is, the uh, regulations allow us to, to back charge for this kind of thing. But that needs to be done. Now, as uh, Peter Paul you know, there is working with planning board on a lot of the engineering. A lot of our engineering is the same as planning board's engineering. And the law doesn't allow us to charge you twice for the same job. So we're uh, going on Peter's tails and letting him do, you know, supply us with all that information. There may be a time when we need additional information that planning board doesn't have. I don't know right, right now if we have any of that. It may come up during the meeting, so we may have to add that. But other than that, we're planning to work with, with Merle on our part of the engineering, but the wet one line Merle doesn't want to touch. So we like to have you are okay to go ahead and hire an expert that you can be the way it's how it's done. Who are you using for that these days? Just use one. Uh, we usually use one of three: um, Lenoir White, uh, Marty Nova, and uh, Sharon Report. Report. Um, if you have a choice, we try to honor your choice. Uh, out of those three, my preference would be Sharon Laporte out of three, just because I'm familiar with all three of them charge, and I'm afraid <laughs> where that could possibly land with a couple of the others. Um, Who would like to work between Rachel and our office and the people and and Sharon see if they are interested in you know, in doing it and getting a cost and we need a check before we can tell them to go ahead and do it. We also have snow on the ground, which is going to hinder or put hinder that a little bit. All be gone by the weekend, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> that's a little positive thinking. Right? You can yeah. tell us that. You're gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's that's a little more reason that if we expedite getting these things in line. If the snow is gone, maybe they can get out there before more snow comes. If we linger too long, we'll be able to have more snow. Most of this uh, is a significant portion of the delineations that, that's at the bottom of the fill yeah. um, along the back. That was done previously. I, I don't think, I mean, they could do that no problem any yeah, time. Also, There's yeah. only a few areas where it's, uh, you know. I a, believe we all can work together to get that, yeah. that part of it, of it done. Uh, a suggestion we are talking about silt sock on this area. We might be able to get do a uh, three or four foot high chip wall all the way around it, mm -hmm. and, you know, and wherever we need to have drainage, we can use stone or something for drainage through. But would be more natural through the area, and it's going to do the same same job. It doesn't like we are working in up some of the er other areas. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Anybody else? Just curious, so is this a secondary location for you, or is this going to be your primary location this for your be business? Our primary location. Okay. And how many, mm -hmm. how many trucks and trailers are you going to pocket uh, So currently, in, we work on a Mad Piece Street right in the center here, and we have mm, seven big trucks. And then there's probably four one bomb size you know, okay. pickups and stuff like that. Uh, we, we like to keep them all inside. That's the purpose of this building. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, that's why we're kind of upsizing them a little bit. Up is getting bigger and they're yeah. squeezing the other side of right now. So. Well, if you keep the property as nice as you keep your truck, so. I'm sure it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And your property. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Thanks. Anything else? Anything else from the board? Anything from the abutters? We have a letter that was submitted um, on behalf of one of the abutters. Uh, it's from Lucas Environmental. I only have two copies, so I'll pass them along. They just 
they just submitted it right now, so I haven't had an opportunity. I'll read out logo. Sure, that's okay. great. From uh, Nancy Watsky, a store, um, just environmental, notice from intent, comment book. Dear Mr. Watsky, as requested, Lucas Environmental LLC, LE, has reviewed the notice of intent application submitted by Smith & Sons for the proposed commercial building with its associated grading, drainage, and site work located at 346 Washington Street in Denver. It is our understanding that your client, Mrs. Ms. Maria Karras, is a direct debutter and has concerns over the proposed project. Our review is limited to the documents noted below and available published information. It does not include on-site inspections or site visits. Ellie is not familiar with the previous land uses and permitting history on the property. Please note that this effort is specific to environmental resources. It does not evaluate issues related to local planning or zoning requirements. The following data sources were examined, examined prior to the review. Federal Emergency Management Flood Insurance Rate Maps, U.S. Geological Survey Topographic Quadrangle, Mass GIS, Mass DEP Wetland and Hydrology Data Layers. This goes on, there's a few more. Uh, the um, following documents were and plans were reviewed. Plan site, site plan set 346 Washington Street. The long names and accessory maps. Uh, notice of intent and accompanying materials received on December 5th, 2017. And the determination of applicability issued by the Cumber Conservation Commission in November 22, 2016. Ellie was not, not able to obtain a copy of the wetland location plan in advance of tonight's conservation plan. After reviewing the documents listed above, Ellie offers the following comments. According to the site plan set, the property contains three separate areas of bordering vegetative wetlands identified in wetlands as wetlands A, B, sorry, A, C, and D. The property also contains 200 foot riverfront area associated with Pudding Brook. The plan also depicts zone A, FEMA flood zone. Therefore, the resource area bordering land subject to flooding also occurs on the property. Ellie was not able to obtain a copy of the wetland report in advance of the meeting. Now, CP wetland change Database indicates there are two wetland change areas to the project site, WC 231, 43, and 44. The areas are located in the northeast and southwest corners of the property. See attached aerial map. The Mass GIS aerial map also shows dark coloration, which can be a signature of prolonged wetness and inundation of the central portion of the site. It also shows what appears to be surface water draining from the south side of the site to the center and into the wetland system associated with putting birth to the north. It is not clear if these areas have been investigated for the presence of wetland resource areas, and LA recommends they be filed, field verified under the appropriate weather conditions. It is thought of thawed ground and no snow cover. The storm conditions do not preclude the areas from supporting wetland conditions. Unpermanent and unauthorized wetland alteration on the site should also be investigated. Through the determination of applicability issued by the Temple Conservation Commission states that flags C16 to C90 and flags B1 to B9 have been determined to not be subject to the regulation under the Wetlands Protection Act and the town bylaws. These flags do not appear on the plan. As Ellie does not have all the documents pertaining to the DOA nor conducted a site visit, it is not clear why these wetlands areas will be determined to be not jurisdictional. Did the flag C9 extend into the cleared area as described in comment two above? The commission and applicants should be aware that even if the wetland areas are determined to be non-jurisdictional under the Wetland Protection Act, they may be federally regulated under section 404 and 401 of the Clean Water Act. The site plan notes the depiction of the top of the bank associated with Pudding Brook is digitized from 2001 delineation. The mean annual high water line of the entire river, not just the area immediately next to the yard, should be field delineated and surveyed to reflect current conditions. Conditions can change in the 17 years since the original delineation. The delineation should be reviewed and field verified so impacts of the riverfront area can be fully evaluated. 
rear front area boundary is not shown on the proposed condition plans, making it difficult to determine what activities are proposed within the rear front area. Yeah. The notice of intent indicates the work within the rear front area should be reviewed and the performance standards for redevelopment because there is a lack of topsoil. However, portions of the rear front appear to be vegetated on the aerial photograph. It is possible that the performance standards for the new development may also apply, specifically in vegetated areas of the site. This should be investigated further to ensure existing conditions are accurate. So, yeah. The notice of intent narrative references a 10,000 square foot restoration area. However, this is not shown to be the site plan so not shown on the site plan so. The narrative states that it will be allowed to revegetate naturally, but a planting should be developed following the Mass DEP wetland replication guidelines, and to reduce the likelihood of colonization by invasive species. The narrative states that there are invasive species already present on the site, at least suggests that the restoration area be demarcated in the field to prevent future encroachment. The site plan depicts breathing and proposed structures within Zone A floodplain. However, the plans do not depict locations of compensatory flood storage. Detailed analysis of proposed cut and fill should be provided in accordance with the performance standards of bordering land subject to flooding. For Section 310 CMR, of the wetland protection act. The limited floodplain will need to be verified as required per the regulations to attend CMR, which are very specific as to the methodologies for determining the limit of the BLC, BLSS. The regulations at 310 CMR state that where NFIP, National Flood Insurance Program, profile data is unavailable, the bordering the boundary of bordering land subject to flooding shall be the maximum lateral extent of floodwaters, which has been observed or recorded in the event that there is a conflict. The issuing authority may require the applicant to determine the boundary of bordering land subject to flooding by engineering calculations. <coughs> I'm going to uh, talk about how to do those engineering calculations. Um, for Article 3A of the Pembroke Wetlands Protection by law, Article 31, 36. The area within 100 feet of the 100 year storm, storm line, BLSF, is regulated and should be identified on the site plan set. Ten, per Article 5C of the Pembroke Wetlands Protection by law, in the case of areas within 200 feet of rivers, streams, creeks, no permit issued here under shall permit any activities unless the applicant. In addition to meeting the otherwise applicable requirements of this chapter, has proved a preponderance of evidence that there is no practical, practicable alternative to the proposed project with less adverse effects. And should there be no practical alternative that, that such activities, including proposed mitigation measures, will have no significant adverse impact on the areas of value protected by this chapter. The notice of intent narrative and site plan said do not provide as alternatives, do not provide an alternative analysis to evaluate and limit work within the front area or mitigation measures, and fail to make the case that the proposed that the project can proceed as designated with no significant adverse impacts to the protected resource area. Therefore, at least suggest that the Conservation Commission require the applicant to prepare an alternative analysis for the protection for the project to avoid and minimize work within the riverfront area and to meet local bylaw regula regulatory criteria. Given concerns identified above, it is recommended that the proposed project undergo an independent third party review to address these issues. Ellie may have an additional comment on behalf of Mrs. Karras throughout the NOI review process upon receipt of additional information. If you have any questions, you can contact me on the uh, information board. Are you Mrs. Ms. Karras? And, and where, where were you? What's your address? I'm right there. 400 Washington Street, but I don't think that it was disclosed uh, with the application yep. for conservation. 
Okay. It wasn't in the letter that uh, I was just written. Okay. No, and it was not in, I went to the file, and I'm not showing in, as in the water there. But I'm not showing the water to show it's right in the water. So that seems like a, a something our so whoever we choose to do the will take care of. Have, have you guys seen this before? No. I, you're totally aware of that. Okay. Does it coincide with what you were looking for anyway, Bob, as far as having the independent well, third yeah, party? Well, normally, I should say no. If we had have had our own independent person, as we have in any other project, we just put the whole thing in their lap and say, okay, now it's yours to do. But because the planning board has already hired an engineer and is working on it, we have to be very careful that we don't overlap what this other engineer did because the law says you only can ask to get paid one time for it. So we're using Merrill as for all we can. And um, I think we have to leave it up to First of all, let these people see the letter, answer with all the questions they can. Some of those questions are Merrill's, and then whatever's left is ours to take care of. But I mean, I think everybody has to limit their, get their part of it out before we can get into it. Because we're on the tail yeah. end of it. Yeah, there's, there's and I agree, a lot it sounded like a lot of it was, please have a third party take a look at it, which the commission's already told us tonight we want to have done, so. And they're, they're wetlands people and probably answer a lot of the questions that are in there. Uh, and the more that's done that way, the less that we have to do, and the less we have to do, the less we have to do. We have to do. <laughs> so if I may ask, ma'am, what, what is your main concern? Is it, is, you know, if you could... So my property is right here, mm -hmm. and it's all the way to here. And this is, this is what they're in there. Um, <coughs> this grinding operation is right here, which is in my backyard. Okay. Um, it's trying to persuade me that there's going to be some stuff going in between that is going to minimize the impact, but we're concerned not just me, but other others too. The impact of the environment, the impact on the wetland, and pretty much everything. So is it, a, a, is it also an aesthetic issue for you? You're concerned about what you I'm look at when you look at I'm looking for peace and noise, but that's another thing with the planning okay. What are the conditions like there now? What's that? What are the conditions like there now? It's beautiful and white. It's nice to stare at. It's, uh, it's also a... I just moved there. That's what it, I mean. It's been industrial forever. It's been mills. It's been built. And I think as long as it's done properly, I, I personally think it's a good use. So you have very few buildings on a very big area. You know, use the storage and mulch. And grinding. Right. 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 That's what was there before. Um, was it grinding or grinding? Yes, some grinding, yeah. So my question would be if, if you, um, you allow me. The fact that there was something before, does it make it that uh, it can be done again? Or does is that the whole reason why we need to come again? Mm -hmm. take a look at? I think we're getting beyond we're getting our jurisdiction. It's only a lot of uses. The funny world will probably get with it. I think, um, I think our jurisdiction is whether the proposed work would be more detrimental to the environment than what has already been and is going on there, or whether it would improve the area from what it is now. That's really our, our we're environmental issues, not uh, some of these other things. Do, do we know what invasives have, uh, this mentioned invasives, do you know what invasives have gone, got on the line? Probably right, right within that central area. That, that is, was, is, there. is there not weed uh, on the frontage of that? I, I yeah, there's probably there. not weed in the block locus up by the street. But you guys have not had a copy of the letter that I just right. read. All right. So we need to give you that. We need to give you that so you guys can address what we're yeah, trying to do. Yeah, Richard would scan that in and send it to us. That'd be great. I think, I don't know if all the people in the board. Realize when he was talking about an RDA that this board issued a year, year and a half ago. Uh, and what that was is when they removed the chips in the center from the last grinding operation, 
he left a hollow, yeah. which fills with water and is growing some species. But it's a man-made situation, and that's what they asked us whether we considered it man-made. The board's yeah. recommendation was yes, it was man-made, so it didn't fall underneath the is that one the of the that piece about right there. Yeah. yeah, I think it made sense in that bigger area to have it plugged into the center instead of out everywhere. Right. I think it just made common it sense. All man -made. The that area is all decayed right. uh, wood products through the years, so it holds water. I mean, nothing drains down through that area <coughs> out there. Uh, we need, we're going to have to have a wetland line anyway. We're going to have to postpone it to another night. Well, we need you. to have your people look at your letter. You know, I think a lot depends on our wetland line, how quick they can get at that. Well, she can let us know. We can meet her out there to have our guy walk her around too, and they can. Elaborate if there's any questions that I need to Yeah. Two, is two weeks a good time? You want to come back in two weeks? That quick enough to get? I think we'd like to say two weeks, and if we get lucky with the weather, great. If not, we'll send in a request for a continuance and not clog up your agenda. Mm -hmm. Will we continue for two weeks? Nobody so. okay with that? Mm -hmm. Aye. Okay. Thank you. What's the, what's the two week date out there, John? 22nd. So the 22nd. Thank you. Thank you. 710. 710. Okay. So 710 for us. Is that early as you can do? That, well, we start at 7. Okay. So the first hearing is at 7 10. Right. Sorry. Good news is that gives us about 45 we minutes. So. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And we can let the planning board know. Well, not really, but yes, please. I know. When you said you want to read it, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was wondering why you jumped on that so fast. We did. Yeah. I just passed the remote machine. Yeah. How long into the letter did you regret that decision? <laughs> Good job taking that on. Yeah. She, she, she was not. Were you? She was not on. I believe. So. Yes, yeah. she is on. She said she wasn't on the list. Right. She said she weren't shown. We weren't, she wasn't shown on the plan. I believe. So yeah. Oh, on, on the plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Are those the green cards? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Um, we're going to do everybody next week. We're going to probably be bugging them probably next week. We're going to go off with the Swan Bird property. Okay. Was, we worked on something years ago. Yep. On uh, Swan Bird and Pennyman. Okay. And we got to probably bug them again about it. Okay. Good. We'll probably get them up next week. All right. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Have a good night. Thank you. It's easy. don't have any. Yeah, You know exactly what the section is. It's not that long. Really? Yeah. Good. We're doing good. It doesn't look like anybody's here for that. Okay. Time to go home. Bye bye. Yeah. 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 Go see if we can find some. Uh, I would, but I don't know who they are. I don't know who they are. McGovern, Terry McGovern. I don't know her. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> 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 he lives on. He lives on. Yeah. Yeah. I think we better go find. Him. He lives on Center Street. Center Town. Is that Al's son? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I, I know Al. I didn't know. Oh, I knew Al. I didn't know him. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
right on the corner. Yeah, Queensburg, yeah. 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 Queensburg. Yeah. 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 Or used to that. I don't know. Yeah, that's a family. Yeah, I remember it was there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Taylor or something. Notice of intent for 230 Water Street, map E15, lot 12. Straco? Straco. Straco, DE pay file SE 056108. The floor is yours, sir. For the record, uh, Terry McGovern from Stanbrook and Taylor representing Mike Straco, Crazy Hoss LLC. With me is Brian Taylor, who also uh, was an engineer in the project, as well as you know, Mike Straco and his partner, Tony Giovanni, um, who can talk about if there are any questions regarding the business operation, which we just answered several of them. So this will be an abbreviated presentation of what I did next door, uh, since not all of the issues are the same. Brief overview of the site. The site is the, known as the existing or former, now former, Taylor rental site at the intersection of Water Street, Scousett Streets, and uh, Church Street. The limo place is just next door, Water Street and rock solid granite is immediately to the east. Single family residence to the long driveway immediately southwest and Phil Howard's residence slightly farther southwest, all entirely located in the business B zone. Um, the existing site, which is just a little over 44,000 square feet or just over an acre, um, on our existing conditions plan, the existing building is located here along the southwest portion of the property. There's an existing paved entrance and parking area here. Uh, the remainder of the rear of the property is a gravel yard. Um, there was some debris recently cleaned up in there, but has traditionally been a gravel storage maneuvering, um, kind of a move around area for the equipment that Taylor Rental was using. And off to the westerly side of the property uh, adjacent to 226 Water Street, which is the retreat uh, driveway and site out to the back, is a BBW line, which was delineated last fall. There's also an arc on the other side, which extends onto the Howard property. Uh, we're showing wetland flags running just off our site on um, Mr. Chapman's property along with a 35-foot buffer, which comes on to our site, 50-foot buffer, and the 100-foot area of the bordering vegetated wetland buffer zone here, which pretty much runs through the rear quarter, rear third of the property. And that runs through the middle of the open gravel area right now. In general, the site slopes uh, from about the gate area or from about the middle of the pavement area gently slopes back, uh, slopes a little bit steeper as it approaches the Chapman property here in the rear. There's an area that slopes onto the driveway here, um, immediately southwest of the building, and extending probably, I don't know, 30, 40 feet off the portion of the rear building, of the rear of the building here, slopes directly onto the driveway, which then shoots down to a low point in this area. There's actually a culvert, which was covered by leaves at the time we were out there. I believe this public one was driving in this location. Uh, wooden fence with a gate on Mr. Chapman's property, kind of the remains of an old fence in this area. Some mature trees, a little scraggly, but along the southwest corner, border vegetation, and then some more mature trees around the northerly property. Um, What's the, the elevation change between the, the front to the back? Back, uh, down this corner, the wetland flag just off the property is 18.7 or just under 19 feet. We have a 20 contour that runs pretty much through the bottom corner of the property, a 22 that runs through the middle. By the time you're up into this corner, you're at about elevation 24. The slab of the existing building, uh, shot in a couple of locations here, is 24.6. So you have roughly I would say from this corner, they actually have a little raised area right here because this is a little bit cut down. But you have, I would say, approximately a five foot drop from corner to corner, maybe closer to six. 
all the way across. Um, and that's in about um, 100 name per quadrant. What the applicant is proposing is a 7,000 square foot new building to be located towards the rear of the property. Um, the area in front, uh, the applicant is going to utilize the existing building for cabinetry, carpentry purposes, and use the new building for the granite uh, countertop fabrication and cutting. And what we're proposing is to remove a small portion of the existing building. The existing building is about 4,900 square feet. We're going to cut off a little less than 300 square feet, kind of a little addition, because this used to be an old house originally at one time, and then what we, a lot of us know is the Taylor rental part of it was added on subsequent to that. A piece of that's going to be cut off. We're going to place a 70 by 100 building in this location, um, pretty much just beyond the zoning set that to 31 feet each side of the property, 30 is required. We're in the buffer zone. The buffer zone cuts through the building. Um, we also show the 50 foot line which knits the back corner of the building and then the 35 foot line which comes beyond the roof overhang and beyond what we're showing as an access around the building which we just discussed next door may change slightly. In the rear of the property we're proposing a detention basin for the stormwater and the way we're proposing to treat the stormwater on the site um, Everything from about the quarter point of the building up here, about 25 feet up the building. We have a high point in this area now, in close to the building, it's grass, wraps around to this area by a, a concrete ramp where it's gravel. The building itself is going to have an elevation, uh, slab elevation of 25.5. So with the 22 contour running through it, it's going to be elevated about three and a half feet above the existing grade. That is because of the replacement septic system, um, as I mentioned next door. The soils on this site are generally very tight. We did five test pits. Three of them landed in an area of uh, either we hit the, actually we didn't hit the old septic, we missed it amazingly. But we hit an area in three of the test pits where a remove and replace of poor material consisting of silt, clay, uh, was taken out in the late 1980s and replaced with beautiful beach sand, a beautiful Title V sand, for a distance of 25 feet around the existing system. Basically, an Olympic swimming pool of sandy fill for the system that's there now. And when you get outside of that, we did a couple of test pits down in the lower corner of the building area here, just in it outside of it. Um, Again, tight, silty, clay, sandy, loam material, very compacted. And we did a perk test at the edge of the proposed system up in this area with um, police ecology witnessing where we got a 45 minute per inch perk rate. And actually I went back and looked at the records afterward and on the previous repair, nobody did a perk. Wasn't that they shouldn't that's be that's held responsible for that. They should be responsible for sending them how are they supposed to be responsible for the post office delivering the mail to these people? Because that's what those water people, street people were saying. Well, we never received it. Right? Raccoon stole our yeah, box. we never received you know, it, but, but, but they mailed it. <laughs> No. But, uh, well, again, they to, somebody has to sign for it, sir. But, uh, somebody has to sign right. for it. But I'm saying so nobody could take it out of the box. Right. Uh, unfortunately, I don't mean to bad you. Unfortunately, you're here, but that's their job. Yeah. To but what are they sure supposed the to do? Then go to go to the person's house and say, "Did you well, receive this?" Well, they should be able to post our sign for the send them back to him. Right. If yeah. they send out five cards and they don't get five back, what, what if I'm ill, I know I have a problem. Like on a site like this, if we send out a, a dozen notices, let's just say somebody's been in Florida for the last three weeks. Yeah. It's over. What will happen is it'll either sit in the mailbox. We have the receipt that shows, yeah, we sent it out. Um, if it's not delivered, 
and maybe one of those in there, but it's unlikely. Usually we'll get a whole envelope back with a little red arrow unable to deliver. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we usually when we get that, we just throw that in the stack and say, here's what happened, and here's the current, you know, we got our, our certified list from the assessor. So we've done everything we can do, right. short of going up and banging on the door and handing the card to them the day before the hearing. We've done everything we can do. That's how it usually works, and that's why we put the receipts or copy of the receipts, what I call the white slips. We'll put those in there as well to show, yeah, we made the effort to send them out. If you have 20 or 30 people, sometimes you don't get a couple cards back. Oh, yeah. yeah. Happens a lot. Right. Happens all the time. Some people never pick them up because they figure it's a revenue or something. It's like, <laughs> and that's what I mean. So then, right. like, why should they be held accountable for those people who... That's just I think the, the applicant's only burden should be to send, send them out. Right. right. Yeah, right. I agree. Right. That's up to you. I believe that's what the law says. Too, is yeah. it? You, yeah, have to, it is. you have to send them out. You don't want to have... No. Yeah. Can't force if the post office doesn't deliver them. Yeah. Because in a lot of instances, like you're planning and zoning, They'll notify within 300 feet, and I know I don't know how Pembroke does it, but I know over in Marshfield, those boards mail them out themselves. We yeah. pay for it, but they mail them out themselves. Zoning here mails them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just just think, asking questions. Yeah, I mean, you know, my thought would be that uh, you know it's certainly important to know that they get sent out, but if something does get uh, is undelivered and gets returned, mm. I think we should know that as well. Yeah. You know, so if, if 10 gets sent out and nine green caps come back and one letter gets sent back, yeah. we should know that the letter came Again, and that's well. why we so used no, to always ask them, yeah. you know, did they all come back? And they say, no, these two did. And we right. send us in the right. record. Do we know? As long as we know. Yeah. You know, but right, we can't, you know. Okay. Well, we have I think so. that's fair. Right. All right. We're. We're a few minutes late, but it wasn't our fault. You guys were. Sorry. Yeah. So, I said, how did we get there with the yeah. notifications? I kind of walked in in the middle of the day. <laughs> okay. It's supposed to be 8 o'clock meeting, but it's actually 821. Notice of intent for 230 Water Street, map E15, lot 12. Straco? Straco. Straco, DE pay file, SE. Zero five six one zero oh eight. The floor is yours, sir. Okay. For the record, uh, Terry McGovern from Stanback and Taylor, representing Mike Straco, Crazy Hoss LLC. With me is Brian Taylor, who also uh, was engineering the project, as well as there we go, Mike Straco <laughs> and his partner Tony Giannetti, um who can talk about if there are any questions regarding business operation, which we just answered several on. So this will be an abbreviated presentation of what I did next door, um, since not all of the issues are the same. Brief overview of the site. The site is the, known as the existing or former, now former Taylor rental site at the intersection of Water Street, Scusit Streets, and um, Church Street. The limo place is just next door, Water Street, and Rock Solid Granite is immediately to the east. Single family residence, the long driveway immediately southwest, and Phil Howard's residence, slightly farther southwest, all entirely located in the Business B zone. Um, the Existing site, which is just a little over 44,000 square feet or just over an acre, um, on our existing conditions plan, the existing building is located here along the southwest portion of the property. There's an existing paved entrance and parking area here. Uh, the remainder of the rear of the property is a gravel yard. Um, there was some debris recently cleaned up in there, but it's traditionally been a gravel storage maneuvering um, kind of a move around area for the equipment that Taylor Rental was using. And off to the westerly side of the property, uh, adjacent to 226 Water Street, which is the retreat uh, driveway and site out to the back, is a BVW line, which was delineated last fall. There's also an arc on the other side, which extends onto the Howard property. Uh, we're showing wetland flags running just off our site on um, 
Mr. Chapman's property, along with the 35-foot buffer, which comes onto our site, a 50-foot buffer, and the 100-foot corner of the bordering vegetated wetland, the buffer zone here, which pretty much runs through the rear quarter, rear third of the property. And that runs through the middle of the open gravel area right now. In general, the site slopes uh, from about the gate area or from about the middle of the pavement area, gently slopes back, uh, slopes a little bit steeper as it approaches the Chapman property here in the rear. There's an area that slopes onto the driveway here, uh, immediately southwest of the building, and extending probably, I don't know, 30, 40 feet off the portion of the rear building, of the rear of the building here, slopes directly onto the driveway which then sheets down to a low point in this area. There's actually a culvert, which was covered by leaves at the time we were out there. I believe there's a culvert under this driveway in this location. Uh, wooden fence with a gate on Mr. Chapman's property, kind of the remains of an old fence in this area. Some mature trees, a little scraggly, but along the southwest corner, border vegetation, and then some more mature trees along the northerly property. Um, What's the elevation change between the, the front to the back? Back, uh, down in this corner, the wetland flag just off the property is 18.7 or just under 19 feet. I have a 20 contour that runs pretty much through the bottom corner of the property, a 22 that runs through the middle. By the time you're up into this corner, you're at about elevation 24. The slab of the existing building uh, shot in a couple of locations here is 24.6. So you have roughly, I would say from this corner, you actually have a little raised area in here because this is a little bit cut down. But you have, I would say, approximately a five foot drop from corner to corner, maybe closer to six, okay. all the way across. Um, and that's in, I don't know, about um, 180 feet, roughly. What the applicant is proposing is a 7,000 square foot new building to be located towards the rear of the property. Um, the area in front, uh, the applicant is going to utilize the existing building for cabinetry, carpentry purposes, and use the new building for the granite uh, countertop fabrication and cutting. And what we're proposing is to remove a small portion of the existing building. The existing building is about 4,900 square feet. We're going to cut off a little less than 300 square feet, kind of a little addition. because This used to be an old house originally at one time, and then what we a lot of us know is the Taylor rental part of it was added on subsequent to that. A piece of that's going to be cut off. We're going to place a 70 by 100 building in this location, um, pretty much just beyond the zoning setbacks. So we have 31 feet to each side of the property, 30 is required. We're in the buffer zone. The buffer zone cuts through the building. Um, we also show the 50 foot line, which nips the back corner of the building. And then the 35-foot line, which comes beyond the roof overhang and beyond what we're showing as an access around the building, which we just discussed next door, may change slightly. In the rear of the property, we're proposing a detention basin for our stormwater. And the way we're proposing to treat the stormwater on this site, um, everything from about the quarter point of the building up here, about 25 feet up the building. We have a high point in this area now, in close to the building, it's grass, wraps around to this area by a concrete ramp where it's gravel. The building itself is going to have an elevation, a uh, slab elevation of 25.5. So with the 22 contour running through it, it's gonna be elevated about three and a half feet above the existing grade. That is because of the replacement septic system um, as I mentioned next door, the soils on this site are generally very tight. We did five test pits. Three of them landed in an area of uh, either we hit the, actually we didn't hit the old septic, we missed it amazingly. But we hit 
an area in three of the test pits where a remove and replace of poor material consisting of silt clay uh, was taken out in the late 1980s and replaced with beautiful beach sand or beautiful Title V sand for a distance of 25 feet around the existing system. Basically, an Olympic swimming pool of sandy fill for the system that's there now. And when you get outside of that, we did a couple of test bits down in the lower corner of the building area here, just in it outside of it. Um, again, tight, silty, clay, sandy loam material, very compacted. And we did a perp test at the edge of the proposed system up in this area with um, Lisa Cullity witnessing where we got a 45 minute per inch perk rate. And actually I went back and looked at the records afterward and on the previous repair, nobody did a perk. Because at that time you could, I don't know whether they used a sieve analysis, it wasn't in the records, but they just designed a thousand square foot leaching system, which in the 1980s you could do. Um, what we're proposing in terms of stormwater is that the forward portion of the, the new part of the site, as well as the existing sheet flow that uh, is carried off right now, is going to be collected in a four bay and rain garden system, which I'll show you a little more of on the next sheet. Um, we're proposing to sheet everything in this direction from the building forward uh, through this stone parking area, which may change, as well as pick up the existing drainage, which now sheets towards the back. It will um, come off the pavement through a P-stone diaphragm, which we have a detail of, into a four bay, which will provide settling and removal of suspended solids through a filter berm, then into a rain garden, which will provide some additional filtering and settling. That rain garden will then when it reaches full capacity, will then flow through a pipe, will extend down the side past the building, past the roof recharge, into the detention basin at the rear of the property. Um, from about the quarter point of the building around, there's sheet flow that it currently is sheeting off towards the driveway, as we just discussed next door. We're going to capture this area and route that into the basin as well. At the moment, we're provo uh, providing roof recharge on either side of the building for our roof runoff, which is typically your cleanest runoff. Um, one of the comments noted by Peter Palmieri, we got a, an extensive review as part of the planning board process because he reviewed the stormwater management checklist, is um, the fact that we're because we're showing recharge, we don't have the required four-foot separation of groundwater so we either have to do that or provide a mounding analysis. So we're looking at the alternative of extending that basin around this side. Obviously, we don't want to elevate the existing building any more than it is now. We feel that it, it sits adequately on the site, and we prefer not to raise it up any further. Um, we're showing a couple of outside display areas, screen dumpster, loading space across the front of the building. What? you folks would be more concerned about is actually I'm going to go to the water that's the that's just the same sheet is the good sheet the enlarged drainage detail sheet I should I just skip the smaller version of this because this is a little clearer to see um, we've shown some spot grades around the building and across the front of the building, again with the slab elevation at 25 and a half, we're showing that we have 25 and a half at the front. As we go over the septic system, we drop about a tenth or so because we need to maintain a foot of cover over that. We're showing a 24 contour in this location, wrapping around, coming off the existing building. Um, and wrapping across, so we're depressing the site, we're sloping the site towards this kind of northeast corner over here into the four bay and the rain garden, the rain garden of which will be under drained. We're going to put uh, six inch perforated pipe underneath the rain garden, wrap it with filter fabric so that fines don't clog it, and 
provide the opportunity for the rain garden to dry out. The bottom of the rain garden and four bay will be at elevation 22. So the depth of the rain garden and four bay will be two feet at its maximum. And that's if the pipe happens to be full. We have the pipe elevation, our invert out at 23. So we would anticipate in a normal 10 to 25 year event, you'd have a foot of water in it. It would drain out within 72 hours. Um, in a 100 year storm, you would possibly fill up to 24, but in order for that to happen, the pipe has to be clogged, this has to be full as well. So the invert out is a foot below the uh, top of the floor bay and the basin. We're showing a 24 contour wrapping around this. In the rear of the site, um, we're showing discharge view. The rain garden as well as a pipe to handle any overflow from the roof recharge, which is sized to a 10-year storm in both cases. And that would go into an elongated detention basin in the rear of the building. The bottom of the basin is at elevation 19, so it's fairly close to the existing grade. Our closest wetland flag is 18.5, so it's a little down gradient of us. So 19 just immediately either side of it, 18.6, 19, 18.8. So you're you're dancing along that elevation 19, but you have a 20 contour here. So the middle of this basin would be about a foot lower than the existing grade in this location. Um, we have a 22 here, so and a 24 up further. So at the high end of it, you'd be four feet below existing grade, roughly. Top of the basin going around is 22, proposed at 22. So the basin wouldn't be, it would be three feet deep. We show an emergency spillway located, again, at the closest point to the wetland. And just adjacent to that, we show an eight-inch pipe as a discharge, which is set in an elevation of 21.3. So bottom of the basin would get slightly less than two and a half feet deep in a typical storm before it starts to dis discharge. Um, Discharge coming in from the roof runoff on both sides, again with this one likely changing to an open air basin. The side slopes of the basin are proposed at a two to one. We have a berm across the top and then a 20 elevation 22 and an elevation 20 contour wrapping in back to the existing contours, which again are at the very bottom corner. 22 contour, the existing contour, which would be the top of the basin is right through this bottom one third of it. So your 22 would come in, wrap around, and then join back into the existing 22 contour here. Um, the top of this is proposed at basically a, a, almost a lip berm around the top at elevation 23, so that we make sure we maintain a half a foot of free board above our spillway, which is at 22 and a half. Um, and again, we, what we just discussed at planning was to extend our basin around the corner, possibly re, uh, replace the roof recharge with a swale in this location and more open air so that we pick up and make sure that no storm water gets to the driveway. We're showing erosion control at the toe of the slope, starting basically at the beginning of our grading and our discharge just above the basin. <coughs> wrapping all the way around, uh, past the building, out past the buffer zone, um, and extending, we're going to extend that up, probably at least parallel to this angle point of the existing building, um, so that we get beyond any limits of work in this area, up in here is one of the comments that Peter Palmieri noted. Um, grades at the back of the building, we are typically 23.7, 23.8, so you're going to come out, have a step at the back of the building, and in a level access around it. There is a roof overhang around three sides of the building. Uh, if they're moving stuff in and out and they want to keep it under cover in the event of rain or inclement weather, they have the ability to do that. Um, a couple of the comments that Peter noted, we are attenuating through a 100-year storm, we're holding back, and detaining through a 100-year storm on the site. Um, his major comment, which we're 
going to work with them on uh, in the next couple of weeks before we go back to planning is the fact that our separation to groundwater, we're, at, we're holding a minimum of two feet in our detention basin and our rain garden, which typically is the, the absolute minimum that you want to get. However, our roof recharge, um, while we're also at two foot minimum, um, if we're going to count recharge, he would prefer to see four feet where we have to do a mounding analysis. Um, so that's one of the things we're going to discuss with him. It may be that we'll have a combination of retaining part of the roof recharge and eliminating some of it in an area where we know um, we can't possibly make the four feet. But that's something we're going to work through with Peter. The rain garden itself on our construction detail sheet. We're showing on our, our typical detail, uh, construction detail, a cross section of our rain garden. Again, the two foot separation to the bottom of the rain garden. Um, the idea being that this area is going to take runoff from, there is kind of a grass swale in here, but it's going to take runoff from the existing pavement, everything from the front of the building coming forward. We're showing here contour elevations from 22 to 24. And we're showing that around the edges of the rain garden, we're going to use um, 12 inch minus trap rock for slope stability. We have a guardrail along the edge of it. We also have at the very edge of the pavement, running around a P-stone diaphragm or filter trench, which we show a def uh, detail of. Basically a two foot deep, one foot wide stone trench that has P-stone on top, uh, three quarter to one and a half inch stone underneath. Kind of similar to a, a septic leaching trench without the septic, wrapped in filter fabric. And it acts as a filtration system. It picks up the immediate fines and immediate runoff from hydrocarbons. You then have the forebay, which again extends from pretty much parallel to where the pavement ends out to the area of the existing gate. And then you have a filtered berm, which we have done a detail of, which primarily consists of a stone filter berm with some fabric, a little bit of a core berm inside, uh, tr larger trap rock inside of that. And what it does is it allows the water in a four bay where your, your primary goal is um, trapping of suspended solids, clarity, that water can go through this, filter through the stone, but your solids get trapped in it. And by the time they reach the rain garden, which provides a second level of filtration and suspended solids removal, <coughs> weeded out at least probably 40% of it in your forebay. And so the goal being to attenuate 80% of your uh, total suspended solids by the time you travel through a forebay, a rain garden, and then the detention basin at the rear of the property um, on the stormwater management checklist, you've taken out 80% 80, 80 of your total suspended solids. You don't really use it for attenuating your storm events. That's what you detention basin does, although it slows the rate of travel, but the primary function of your floor bay in your rain garden is um, removal of those suspended solids. So even though in a large part, the site itself is redevelopment of an existing site, which is the forward portion of the property here, because we're providing a new building, new paving area, we have to show that we have to demonstrate that we meet the stormwater management checklist for any of the new development on the site. You can't really claim the whole site is redevelopment. You're in kind of one of those um, limbo areas where you're a little bit of both. Um, the remaining construction details um, besides the spillway, we're showing that uh, should they remain in place, our roof recharge, we had anticipated using uh, precast concrete because it's an area where 
might be moving a skid steer around small piece of equipment so you don't want to use plastic or anything that will crush. Uh, again, noting two feet of separation, downspouts coming directly into the side of this with a foot of cover over it. And our last construction are those, are those, detail sheet. Are those downspouts off the roof or roof drains? Then? Roof drain, yep. Straight down and straight into the recharge system or into the chambers because your, your roof source of runoff Unless you're on a certain type of metal roof, which this won't be, generally your roof runoff is considered your cleanest uh, stormwater discharge. Once it hits the pavement, it's subject to hydrocarbons, etc. But roof runoff, just off a normal roof or coated roof, uh, is considered non polluted. It's considered your cleanest form of runoff. Our other construction details we've shown the task pits that we dug on the site, um, plantings, which will be accomplished in the southwest and northeast corner. Um, we also took a few minutes to mention that as part of the operation, and I mentioned that we, we we're showing a replacement sewage system, uh, there is a holding tank for floor drains within the building. That holding tank um, is located at the front of the building, adjacent to the septic system here, none of the um, components of the holding tank system, which are only for floor drains, if you back a truck into a building in any of the days, you're supposed to have an industrial holding tank if you have a floor drain. Not directly part of the stone cutting process, but obviously if you clean the floors and there's some ancillary dust or whatever, that may get in here as well. We anticipate gets pumped every three to six months. Um, it is not connected to the septic, not connected to the drainage in any way. Um, it's important to note that we don't have any catch basin structures on the site. We don't have any, any trap structures. This is all being accomplished by overland runoff into the four bay rain garden and an overland runoff down the side of the building into the detention basin uh, for the area along this northerly side of the building and a little bit of the north or northwesterly side that would slope into us. And if we extend this around the corner as we're looking to do, and we pick up probably half to two thirds of the rear building, rear of the building. So with that, I'd like to open it back up to questions from the commission. Can you explain some, some of the usage of these structures, of the existing structure and the new structure? What What's going to happen in these buildings? Okay, the existing structure um, is going to be the, the carpentry shop, if you will, or the cabinet shop, because the combined, um, as Mr. Stracco and Tony noted next door, um, they consolidate their operations. They have a site currently that they use next door, which is primarily a showroom, rock solid granite, and their fabrication is located in East Bridgewater. Bridgewater. Um, what they'd like to do, because it's become unwieldy to be in both locations, is consolidate everything into one location. So this will be carpentry, cabinet, wood storage. The new building uh, is primarily for the granite processing. And you need to, I mean, when you think of the size of granite countertops, if you drive by there, they have a, I don't know if they're still out there now with the snow, but in good weather, there's usually a couple of racks of them sitting out on the side, as well as you see some um, over across the street as well. And they need to be able to store these, move them around, do the cutting, the fabrication, etc. So that's what the new building is for. It's for the, primarily for the granite cutting and granite fabrication. And so you guys are rock solid? Yes. Okay. And so that's, is that still going to be part of your operation? Which the original building? The original building will stay as a showroom. As a showroom, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Um, just on the P stone <coughs> tube underneath the the trench underneath the rain garden. Mm -hmm. um, what's the life longevity of those, and what's the what, what do you expect to get out of those? It's it's made out of Schedule Forty PVC. What so, size? 
the piping coming out here is going to be hmm? what size? Six inch. Six inch. Six, I'm sorry. Uh, <coughs> and if you wrap it, the primary thing is if you wrap it with filter fabric, you want to make sure that um, you're required to show that your any of your open air basins, whether they be a four bay, a rain garden, a detention basin, were required to demonstrate that they will drain within 72 hours per the stormwater management regulations. And so, because as I mentioned, we have very, very poor soils in this area, we have to demonstrate that this rain garden will accept dry, water. will accept water, but will also, because again, the primary purpose is filtration, not infiltration, that this garden won't, this rain garden won't, you know, unless you have something catastrophically unusual like this time of year, right now where you have, say we had a rainstorm and then we have weather like we have now. You have an ice rink for a few oh, days. Yeah. And we, we talk about that a lot in stormwater, but in your normal condition, your drainage basin should um, dry out within or empty within 72 hours. My, my question was, not to be specific, was what is the duration of that product like on a, on a site? What do you expect Schedule to get Schedule 40 PVC? No, the, the actual filtration, you know, of that without clogging. What is the... How do we expect the rain? rain? Life expectancy. Okay, the rain, the the rain garden itself, um, actually in your, on our plan, not only do we have a construction series of notes because you have some layers to this. You have a bottom layer consisting of stone with the pipe, and in this intermediate layer, which we call kind of loosely a bioretention mass layer, it's made up of soil, mulch, fertilizer. Um, basically, you're supposed to go through and look at that and potentially either replace, you have a maintenance schedule where you go through and remove any fines, any sediments that are in the top layer. So that O&M is included in this whole stormwater yeah. management report, which was part of what you have. It's an operation of maintenance and sites, uh, you know, quarterly, mm -hmm. annual, daily, daily site, tests. That yes, sir. Wow. Just do it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this, yeah. this one, um, you know, has all of the, the uh, uh, maintenance operations. Okay. So we made sure we, made, we include that as part of the notice of intent, and it becomes part of the order of conditions. Nice. You guys cite it to them, and then we tell the guys, where's the Bible? We want it on the job, because this tells you what to do. If, if, it, if it's maintained properly, the few that I've seen out over time, um, if they maintain properly, you might go in every couple of years and take skim off the top part of this. It's all manual. And basically replace yeah. the mulch, the wood chips, the soil in the top part of it. If you have, and because of, um, because you're actually fronting on pavement here, you're not going to get a lot of sediment or a lot of fines getting into that. Where you might, say you were doing this off a subdivision roadway or, you know, a larger municipal parking lot or shopping plaza where you did a lot of sanding and salting year-round, something like that. It would clog up a lot quicker. And Here, even, even with this, you can reach with a grade all. But that's right. all part of the OM. Yeah. So we, you, you we can do it by hand. We get that covered. Can you can you put up the uh, building diagram here? How long does the fabric filters last for? It's Marafi filter fabric. It's a problem. I mean, it's it's long, over. long as it any of us can get a lot of issue. Bro. Yeah, so take the ones back. It doesn't get any UV breakdowns. So, you know. It's, so noticing that you, you nipped the 50-foot buffer there with the corner of the building, was there a reason that you couldn't push the building up three or four yeah. feet to get out of that 50-foot line? Primarily the septic system, the replacement septic system. Um, we're at, because we're a slab on grade with the building, we can be 10 feet off of that building. Um, right now, the existing septic system, I'm not going to flip sheets all over the place, but the Existing system runs 90 degrees to this perpendicular. Um, because this building has a basement, we need to be 20 feet off of it, and we're at the bare minimum for both of them. We're really right off the bare minimum. We could ask Brooke Monroe to look at that flag and see if it belongs three feet further back. <laughs> um, just knocked a thought right out of my head, too. Sorry. <laughs> um, 
other than the fact that the, the existing site is pretty much, it was a whole gravel yard, so we're not into anything that's, that's virgin territory in the back of the site as well. Anybody else? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Question. Oh, if you're running from the rain gun back to your knee, mm -hmm. how much cover are you going to have on that pipe? Um, no, I'm, more, I'm concerned about yep. freeze. Yep. Right, right here, basically with an invert of 23, we're showing a grade of about 25 and a half. At the edge of the our parking maneuvering area, we have 25.7. Um, it's a 12 inch, it's reinforced concrete. We're doing it as an RCP, not PVC. Um, roughly a foot and a half of cover. Over yeah, 12 inches. Yeah, so even if you got some icing on the bottom, you still yeah. have that flow. That's why we went over size instead and of a second, six inch. Uh, over. You're talking the storage tank for floor drain out front. I yeah. ran into a little problem a while back on cutting of granite or cutting of stone. The material cutting got out into some leaching area and and it does, doesn't work well at all. Yeah, and yeah, so I just want to make sure that we're we're covered in that that part of the thing. In the manufacturing uh, product information we have, they, it's really cool. You can explain how it separates it, but it, it, it basically gives you it separates all the the uh, stone dust and into five hundred pound bags, which then. With the concealed land, yeah, this, those. in this area they were, they were wet cutting in, and the yeah, and it was getting out. Yeah, the, these all, then, then, all yeah, the drainage right. in the whole area. Yeah, was so this would be the, the machines will have their own separate drainage that goes into what they call hydroclear, and that recycles the water. So it would be a separate, whole separate system. And that's completely yes. internal to the building. It's not that part of it's not on the exterior oh, yeah, building. It's 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 the, and the floor yeah. drains are just for trucks. It's called yeah. compliance with plumbing code. If we're going to put our truck inside, we have to have a floor. So I was just wondering, how far away is the North River from there? Oh, it's a good distance yeah. out. Yeah. Cover sheet. I think we have a... All over 300. Yeah. yeah we're, up, <laughs> we're up here. Um, there is actually, the wetland is a tributary. Um, it runs out tributary. kind of in this general direction, north, almost due north, out to it. But the river itself... This house is about 500 feet off our property line. So yeah. you're almost triple that. Thanks. Anybody else? Any of the abutters? You have, I'm sorry about, you still have to go through planning board. Otherwise, we, we have a continued hearing for the 12th and we're in front of ZBA um, on the 29th of this month. So we'll be back Anyways. in front of planning. We have several issues raised at planning. Some which may affect the stormwater, um, most predominantly just looking at the roof recharge. That's the primary thing. All as far of the, as the engineering stuff, we're also fencing separation. Oh, well, I'm really good at yeah. Rather than having us close, I don't want to close and have to, no, I would to agree. reopen. I want to make sure. Uh, I would agree lost. because th there is going to be revisions to the overall plan based on discussions we have at planning. In fact, we have a, a site visit on the 20th. We're going to do a site walk with them on the 20th. So, yeah, I would agree that closing it right now is not, not necessary. 20th, 20, 21, 22 Monday? Yeah. Yep. Would you want one more week beyond that? Well, we'll continue to planning to the 20, uh, sorry, to the uh, February 12th. February 12th, we're planning. I mean, if we get to the 28th, that would be great because we'll, by then we'll probably be through everything that we kind of know what the abutters issues are and concerns are in the fight about. So we should be able to hammer everything home by then. She's playing a game. She's in <laughs> 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 Uh, you guys parallel play now? <laughs> February 28th is a Wednesday. So it'd be the 20th. No, it's the 20th. 
February 26th? Oh, not February, no, January. No, January. January 26th. January 26th. That's a Sunday. January 26th. That's the calendar. I don't have my 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 calendar. We're scheduled back on the 5th, right? Yeah, so we're scheduled again on the 22nd. So they can come in on yeah. February 5th. Oh, yeah. yeah, the 22nd or February 5th. February 5th. All right. We'll put you at 710. Okay. That, that puts us after CPA in case anything. That makes sense. Changes. Good idea. Yeah. 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 Great. Anybody else? I just, did you have something to say? I, I, my question was, was hanging from next door and I just want to address it with you guys, Shannon Wilson, 248. So we're the direct side of butters for the majority of this project. And last we checked because we're involved in the 40B behind us also is there, that was rare and endangered species habitat zoned. So is it still, there's some confusion over. We, we looked that. it up. And as of the most recent mapping, which is probably part of our submittal, because I usually put yes. it in there, uh, it's out as of now. Well, a couple and months ago it was, to the best of our knowledge and through our lawyers. So we're we're a little confused about is this. this. Most of this area is open anyway. So yeah, well, they, they made some major, and Rachel can probably look it up pretty quick and check it on Oliver. But... Um, the mapping changed to a pretty large extent, I want to say around September, October of now, last year, because we've been working on some projects in Marshfield that were in, that are now out. They shrunk the size of a lot of the priority habitats, and this was one of them. And we actually caught it more by accident than by design. We just happened to go through and be looking at another project and looked at this one and said, hey, wait a minute, this one changed too. And it, it's currently, it's out. But please, yeah. you know, resubmit it, but please go ahead and verify. On all of it, it's easy to do. Anybody else? I was just curious about if there's a, an intended construction date and how long the construction might take. As quickly as possible, I'm sure. Like <laughs> possible or it has to be closed. I mean, it depends on, well, at this point, I don't think we'll be closing until after the ground. Stops breathing, mm-hmm. but you never know around New England. Um, I don't. I couldn't really speak to the exact date. I can get that information for you. I don't know how long it takes to put. Do you have any idea how long it takes to do this? Well, there's a 20 day appeal period for ZBA. We have an appeal period for yeah. planning and a 10 day appeal period for CONCOM. So once we get approvals, yeah. then the boards have to formulate their decisions. Right. Then they have to file them with the town clerk, and then the clock starts. The appeal period starts. Click, click on that. So what's your period of cells? It's pre construction. Months, weeks. Yeah, there's time. Well, the construction period itself. Oh no, it will, no, it won't be. A, it won't be years, and it, it will be months, or a few months. But it's not the good thing about the pre-engineered buildings. You basically have seven subs to come in, and the fellow who's GC in the job is very, very experienced. Mm-hmm. So. Anybody else? Should we make a motion we'll to continue? continue? Yeah. Motion to continue. Um, to um, February 5th. Yeah, yeah. That's 7th. Everybody agree? Aye. 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 Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank Sorry, you. we're running behind. Yeah. Sorry, we'll make it up on the way. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> You'll leave me a stand. You want to give me a straight Okay. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. Yes, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's go. Now we can, I will be close this meeting. Second. Motion adjourn. Adjourn. Yeah. Motion adjourn. Second. All in favor? Oh, yes. Yeah.